कर देते हैं So in the last class we did talk about uh, fundamental theorem of divergences and fundamental theorem for curves also. Both of these theorems they does basically let you convert volume integral into surface integral or surface integral integral into line integral. Now we are going to use these fundamental theorems in derivation of Maxwell's equation. We'll start with the first equation, which uh, you might be already familiar with the derivations that I'm going to do right now. A couple of derivations and then we'll do some change in, in the derivations and we'll see what was wrong before maxwell introduced his magical term which basically unified electricity and magnetism and the term electromagnetism came into picture so let's first uh, look at the way electricity and magnetism were before maxwell so the first is which is nowadays called as maxwell's first equation but that is also your gauss law in electromagnetism Gauss law in electricity, so you know the magnetism. Or this is nowadays also called as your Maxwell's first equation. You already know that suppose if you have a charge, charge let's say you had a charge here, and around this charge, I did draw a hypothetical. Sphere. So uh, it does not necessarily have to be sphere. Aap chaho to iske around aap cylindrical draw kar sakte ho. Aap chaho to iske around koi bhi random shape kar, uh, uh, draw kar sakte ho. The reason we did choose sphere because spheres are easiest to deal with. Agar aap random shape loge, to aapko jab integration karna padega, to small step size mein integration karna padega. Spheres are easiest to deal with. So that's why usually jab kabhi bhi aap dekhoge, aap kisi charge ke around koi sphere, uh, koi area draw karna chahate ho, ya jase ampere circuital law mein, jo current carrying wire ke around, agar aap koi loop draw karna chahate ho, aap to circular loop draw karte ho. Uh, this, ideally, you can have any shape. The reason why we are sticking to circular or spherical uh, regime is because spheres or circles are easiest to deal with mathematically. Wo hamare liye deal karna asan ho jata hai. So let's say you had a charge over here. And let's say you had the magnetic, uh, you had the electric flux. And for the electric flux, electric flux by definition is equal to the number of electric field lines which are passing through that particular area here. And ye jo area humne draw kiya hai, ye humne ek spherical area jo hai, surface area, wo humne draw kiya gaya hai. So you might already be familiar with this expression here, ki aapka electric flux hai, wo iske equal hoga. Now some of you might already know that this is further equal to Q upon epsilon naught. But you can derive that very easily. Agar aapka electric field hai, and let's say you had a positive charge here. Positive charge ki wajah se aapka jo electric field hoga, that would be equal to Q upon 4 pi epsilon naught r square into r unit vector. Kyunki electric field ek vector quantity hai, uski jo direction hogi, that would be the same as is the direction of r vector here. Multiplied by ds. Ab agar aap is spherical surface pe ek chota sa area agar aap pick kar lete ho here so the surface area uh, i am not uh, very sure if you know in the spherical coordinates like cartesian coordinates mein aapke paas mein x y z hota hai spherical coordinates mein you have r theta and phi ye aapke coordinates hote hai so agar aap spherical coordinates mein surface area ek uh, spherical surface ka agar aap area ki baat karte ho then that area is basically given by r square sin theta d theta d5 into unit vector r iski jo direction hogi wo aapki r ki direction mein hoga the perpendicular direction to the surface area here this basically gives a very small surface area of a very small surface that you have drawn on a spherical surface aapne spherical surface choose kiya aur aapko pata hai ki sphere ka jo aap surface area agar aap choose karte ho to wo 4 pi r square aata hai and that basically comes from here yahan se aapka 4 pi r square aata hai yahan pe aapki theta ki integration ki limit hoti hai 0 to pi phi ki aapki integration hoti limit hoti hai from 0 to 2 pi 
आर यूनिट फैक्टर आर यूनिट फैक्टर डोट प्रोडक्ट आपका वन हो जाएगा आर स्केयर से आपका आर स्केयर कैंसिल हो जाएगा यहाँ से आपका क्यू अपॉन फोर पाई एफ सेल नोट आप बाहर निकाल सकते हो साइन थीटा डी थीटा डी फाइव अगर आप इसका इंटीग्रेशन करोगे डी फाइव का इंटीग्रेशन हमें जीरो टू टू पाई करना है तो आपके पास में एक फैक्टर टू पाई का आ जाता है साइन थीटा डी थीटा का अगर आप इंटीग्रेशन करोगे साइन थीटा का इंटीग्रेशन माइनस कोस थीटा आता है थीटा की लिमिट जीरो टू पाइव प्लग इन करोगे तो आपको एक टू का फैक्टर मिल जाता है एंड दैट्स हाउ यू गेट क्यू अपॉन एफ सेल नोट so if you are aware of this being equal to this well or good if you are not aware that they how they are equal to each other you can just simply draw a spherical surface around a charge aapka chahe positive charge hai ya negative charge hai agar negative charge hoga to yahan pe aap minus q plug in kar doge is पॉजिटिव चार्ज की वजह से इस पॉइंट पे आपने जो स्फेरिकल सरफेस ड्रॉ किया है उसके ऊपर आप एक छोटा सा सरफेस एरिया आप प्लग इन कर सकते हो चूज कर सकते हो उस छोटे से सरफेस एरिया जो आपने चूज किया है उसका जो एरिया होगा दैट वुड बी गिवन बाय दिस एक्सप्रेशन हियर एंड दैट्स हाउ यू फाइनली गेट दिस एक्सप्रेशन क्यू अपॉन एफ सेल नोट बट इफ यू नो दिस बींग इक्वल टू ईच अदर दैट्स वेरी गुड नाउ फ्रॉम हियर Now, in Maxwell's first two equation, आपकी जो initial equation one and equation two है, there we are going to apply fundamental theorem of divergences, जहाँ पे हम surface integral को volume integral में convert करेंगे. Fundamental theorem of divergences, let me remind you, it says that अगर आप कोई भी vector quantity लेते हो, उस vector quantity का over the volume आप इंटीग्रेट डाइवर्जेंस लेके ओवर द वॉल्यूम अगर आप इंटीग्रेट करते हो दैट इज इक्वल टू द वैल्यू ऑफ दैट वेक्टर क्वांटिटी एट द सरफेस दिस इज योर फंडामेंटल थ्योरम ऑफ डाइवर्जेंसेस अब अगर मैं यहां पे v की जगह जो मेरा रैंडम वेक्टर था उसको अगर मैं इलेक्ट्रिक फील्ड से रिप्लेस कर देती हूं दैट मींस आई विल हैव e डॉट ds ऑन दिस साइड e dot ds जो कि मेरे इस वाले एक्सप्रेशन में भी है यूजिंग फंडामेंटल थ्योरम ऑफ डाइवर्जेंसेस आई कैन रीराइट इट इन दिस वे सो दिस एक्सप्रेशन देन आई कैन रीराइट सेइंग दैट डेल डॉट e इंटीग्रेटेड ओवर द वॉल्यूम d tau बेसिकली रिप्रेजेंट्स योर वेरी स्मॉल वॉल्यूम पोर्शन and let me remind you that i am not going to put triple integral for volume integral and double integral for surface integral i am just going to put one integration sign and if this is here volume integral it is obvious that you are going to integrate it over if you are in spherical coordinate r theta and phi if you are in cartesian coordinates then you are going to integrate it over x y and z i am not going to put triple integral or for volume integration and i am not going to put double integral for surface integral also i am going to assume that that is obvious because if you are integrating it over volume you have to do the triple integration on the right hand side you have q upon epsilon naught state right again i have written this expression into this expression by using this fundamental theorem of divergences here v dot ds is equal to del dot v d tau agar v ko main e se replace kar deti hu jo yahan pe aapka electric field vector hai then e dot ds has to be equal to del dot e integrated over volume here and that's what we have done here now if you talk about the charge here charge is nothing but your charge density integrated over the volume where rho represents your charge density which is charge per unit volume basically from here then i can say that your del dot e is equal to rho upon epsilon naught and this is basically your maxwell's first equation in differential form this is in the integral form ye aapki integral form mein thi अगर आपने डेल ऑपरेटर अप्लाई कर दिया डेल ऑपरेटर इज बेसिकली गिविंग इंस्ट्रक्शंस टू डिफ्रेंशिएट वट एवर फॉलोज आफ्टर इट हेंस दिस बेसिक दिस फर्स्ट इक्वेशन इज मैक्सवर्स फर्स्ट इक्वेशन इन डिफरेंशियल फॉर्म डाइवर्जेंस ऑफ इलेक्ट्रिक फील्ड इज नॉन जीरो राइट फिजिकली वट डज दिस मीन इज दैट यू कैन हैव डाइवर्जेंस आइदर पॉजिटिव और नेगेटिव right that basically means that you can have a single positive charge or you can have a single negative charge also your electric monopoles can exist in the nature
and this is basically from your divergence being non zero if your divergence is non zero that means you can have a positive flow or a negative flow you can have sources or you can have sinks also and that basically means in term of electric charges that you can have a separate positive charge or you can have a separate negative charge also so this is your basically maxwell's first equation coming to the second equation uh ma'am हां जी बच्चे मैम इन द प्रीवियस कैन यू प्लीज शिफ्ट टू द प्रीवियस स्लाइड वंस हां जी मैम इन द सेकंड लास्ट लाइन हम आफ्टर q बाय एप्सिलॉन नॉट हाउ यू रिटन k बाय एप्सिलॉन नॉट इंटीग्रेशन रो दिस इज नॉट k दिस वाज सिंपली एरो सॉरी अबाउट दैट दिस वाज सिंपली एन एरो साइन हियर एंड इन फ्रंट ऑफ दैट आई डिड राइट वन सो आई हैव टेकन वन अपॉन एप्सिलॉन नॉट आउटसाइड q is charge which i have written charge density multiplied by the volume okay ma'am yeah so that was not k now let's talk about the maxwell second equation similar to the electric field for the magnetic field you say the magnetic flux is basically given by around a closed surface that would be given by this term over here and since you say that magnetic field lines if you have a closed surface for any closed surface as many magnetic field lines enter that surface as many magnetic field lines are going to leave that surface jitni magnetic field line us surface mein enter karengi exactly utni hi surface uh, utni magnetic field lines us surface ko leave karengi that means this is basically equal to zero because you have the same number of magnetic field lines leaving and the same number of magnetic field lines that would be entering and leaving they are exactly equal to each other again apply the fundamental theorem of divergences you can convert this surface integral into volume integral again and that would mean that you can say that into d tau is equal to zero i am again using this theorem which is the fundamental theorem of divergences b dot ds i am writing del dot b times d tau here this is equal to zero in the previous equation as well as in this equation d tau cannot be zero because remember d tau is the small volume element right even though it is very small but nonetheless the volume component that you have chosen it is a finite number so this cannot be zero that means your del dot b is going to be equal to zero divergence of magnetic field is zero and remember for the vector field whose divergence is zero we call those field as solenoidal field and hence your magnetic field is a solenoidal field because its divergence is zero electric field is not a solenoidal field and this also means that your magnetic monopoles cannot exist because your divergence is always always going to be zero for the magnetic field irrespective of the place or irrespective of the kind of magnetic field that you are talking about so these are maxwell's two equation this is again maxwell equation in second equation in differential form because your del operator is basically a differential operator now let's move on to the third equation and this third equation also you might already be familiar this is nothing but your faraday's law of electromagnetic induction ma'am please switch to the previous slide once han ji bachche okay ma'am now in the third and fourth maxwell equation we are going to use the fundamental theorem of curves and the fundamental theorem of curves basically states that agar aapke paas mein koi bhi vector hai us vector ka aap curve over the surface integral kar lo ya aap us vector ki jo value hai wo aap boundary pe fir se calculate kar lo so you are converting your surface integral into line integral here over the time there might be places wahan pe jahan pe main da which basically represents the surface area i might write it ds also 
but nonetheless, both of them are the same numbers here. Coming to the Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction, induction, you know by definition, it basically states that you will have an induced EMF, right? You will have an induced EMF and that induced EMF is nothing but rate of change of magnetic flux. Aapka magnetic flux kis rate ke saath mein change ho hai? That basically means that agar aapke paas mein koi magnetic field hai, let's say is wale portion mein, you have the magnetic field, aur ab agar aap is mein ek wire ko move karate ho yaha pe, ya to aap yaha pe is field ko move karado, ya aap is wire ko move karado, ya aap magnetic field ka jo magnitude hai, wo as a function of time karado, in all the three cases, is wire ke through jo hai, wo current flow karega. Because first two cases may either you are moving this magnetic field to left or right may move kar sakte ho. You have that choice. You have the choice ki aap is wire ko left or right may move kar sakte ho. And the third choice is that dono ko stationary rakho and you vary the magnetic field as a function of time. In all the three cases, there will be some current that is going to flow th through this wire. Right. And this is basically your due to induced EMF. And the induced EMF is nothing but rate of change of the magnetic flux here. There is something else I'm going to talk about now. Uh, you and which I think might be uh, very obvious to you, uh, but nonetheless, let me discuss that. If you have a function, which is a function of X and Y, right? Then what you say is that agar aap is function ko with respect to X and Y in differentiate kar rahe ho, it does not matter aap pehle isko with respect to x differentiate karo ya aap isko with respect to pehle y differentiate karo. The reason being that x and y are independent of the each other. Now, here because now we are saying that your magnetic field is a function of time now. So that means, let's say that I have a something, some function now. And that function is on the top of x, y, z is also a function of time as well. Remember the del operator. Del operator by definition, we said is only a function of x, y, and z only. This is how we define the del function. So del function does not have anything to do with time. Hence, Time ke with respect to differentiation or del ke with respect to differentiation are independent of each other. That basically means that if I have, let's say, something like this, and I should now write curly note D because B now I'm saying is a function of X, Y, Z as well as time. So this basically I can claim is equal to, let me write the other on this side, this. Because I am saying that you have a del operator. Your del operator is only a function of x, y, z. It does not have anything to do with time. Hence, I can change the derivation with respect to time and del as per my requirement. And the value should remain the same. So this also I'm going to use in the coming lectures for electromagnetic theory. And from now onwards, I'm going to just switch del operator and time from one place to another place as per our requirement or as per the requirement of our derivation. Now, this magnetic flux here, I can also write this as B dot DS or B dot DA. Let's talk about the area and stick to DA being the area here, right? Magnetic flux is nothing but B dot DA. Now here, if I say that this magnetic field, it may be a function of X, Y, Z also. Not only it may be a function of time, you can also have a possibility that your magnetic field is different to this location, pe different or this location. Pe different ho. You can have a position dependent also. So I can ideally now write this in this form. That's why I'm switching D by DT to curly by curly T. When you are saying d by dt, you are saying that your magnetic field is only a function of time. But now I'm going, now I'm going to be more flexible, where let's assume maybe your magnetic field is a function of x, y, and z also. And let's then convert d by dt to curly by curly t also. This would be equal to 
now this here induced emf by definition even though the name says that it's electromot uh, electromotive force but it's a potential you know that right induced emf is a potential or it is basically energy per unit charge this induced emf by definition is also defined as the amount of work done in carrying a unit charge through a closed loop this is the definition of induced emf this is also basically equal to amount of work done in moving a unit positive charge around a closed loop maybe you are already aware of this way of defining induced emf also so if this is the amount of work done in moving a unit positive charge around a closed loop that means this is basically equal to if it's a unit charge the force q times e work done is force multiplied by displacement force in the case of electric field is equal to q times e charge we are saying it's a unit positive charge so that means this is basically equal to 1 times e dot the amount of distance traveled so i'm integrating it over dl now so this is nothing but f dot dl jo aapka work done hoga उसको मैंने ओवर द स्मॉल लेंथ में डिवाइड करके इंटीग्रेट कर दिया है बिकॉज यू कैन हैव एनी एनी काइंड ऑफ रैंडम क्लोज लूप शेप तो आपको स्मॉल स्मॉल स्टेप साइज में उसको डिस्ट्रीब्यूट करना पड़ेगा नाउ इफ दिस इज ई डॉट डी एल नाउ बाय यूजिंग दिस फंडामेंटल थ्योरम ऑफ कर्ल्स हियर आई कैन कन्वर्ट दिस लाइन इंटीग्रल इन द सरफेस इंटीग्रल that means your e dot dl is nothing but this is going to be equal to del cross e dot da by using stokes theorem or fundamental theorem of curls if you compare equation 1 and equation 2 on the left hand side in both of the equations is induced emf that means your right hand side has to be equal to each other i can then claim that your del cross e is basically equal to minus curly b by curly t from equation 1 and equation 2 from this and this because your da is common in both of the cases and either what you can do is that you can say that your integration of del cross e plus curly b by curly t dot da is equal to 0 right kyunki aap keh rahe ho ye iske equal hai agar ye iske equal hai to isko aap iski taraf leke aaoge to minus aapka plus ho jayega you will get this expression here da cannot be zero kyunki wo aapne ek small finite area liya hai that means aapki within the term jo hai bracket ke wo that has to be zero which basically means that del cross is equal to minus curly by curly t or you can simply conclude that by looking this expression here that you have dot da on the both sides that means this term has to be equal to this term here physically what does this mean is that you can have a time varying magnetic field अगर आपके पास में कभी भी टाइम वेरिंग मैग्नेटिक फील्ड होगा यू कैन प्रोड्यूस द इलेक्ट्रिक फील्ड यूजिंग दैट दिस इज द फिजिकल इंटरप्रिटेशन ऑफ द फेराडेज लॉ अ टाइम वेरिंग मैग्नेटिक फील्ड इज गोइंग टू प्रोड्यूस एन इलेक्ट्रिक फील्ड नाउ इन दिस इक्वेशन दैट आई हैव रिटर्न एनी वन हैज एनी डाउट इन दिस इक्वेशन सो फार excuse me ma'am ha ji ma'am can you explain after the step when you compare the two equation 
actually i got a lag okay so when you compared equation 1 and equation 2 here aapke dono taraf dot da hai which is the common term here right left hand side mein dono mein aapke paas mein induced emf hai so your right hand side has to be equal to each other agar aapki dono ki right hand side equal honi hai ek dusre ke that means your del cross e has to be equal to minus curly b by curly t it's as simple as that okay ma'am thank you so this says that you can have a time varying magnetic field and then you can produce the electric field now if i take divergence on both sides and there is a reason why we are checking it by taking divergence on the both sides take you will have del dot del cross e sorry is equal to del dot minus curly b by curly t and this is what i meant in the previous slide when i said that time with respect to time derivation and with respect to position jo aapka derivation hai now i i'll interchange them as per my convenience so i'm claiming that i can now write it in this form also this expression i can write in this form i can take curly by curly t outside the reason being that this is a derivative with respect to time your del operator is a derivation with respect to position both of them are independent of each other so i can take the time derivation out and i can take the del operator inside now from the scalar triple product you know that if you have any two vectors in such a way that this would be equal to zero so that means this side is equal to zero right hand side del dot b was zero from maxwell second equation so your right hand side is also equal to zero you have your left hand side equal to zero you have your right hand side also equal to zero independent of each other this is simply from the vector root and this is because our del dot b is equal to zero so that means this term is also zero so everything was okay so far there was nothing wrong with the way physics was going up to this point now let's move on to the next equation and the next equation is basically your ampere circuit law and this is basically and sorry about that uh, this is also called as maxwell's third equation in differential form which we derived from faraday's law of induction now coming to ampere circuit law it basically states that and you might be very well aware of that if you have any current carrying wire you draw an amperian loop around it and usually your amperian loop that you draw you draw it circular but you can take it of any random shape of your choice as long as that loop encloses that current carrying wire it doesn't matter what is the shape of the loop that you are taking here but we take it circular for our own convenience so ampere ampere circuit law basically states that if this current carrying wire is going to produce a magnetic field and that integration of that magnetic field is basically going to be equal to this term agar aapne ye ampere ampere loop small draw kiya hai to aapka magnitude uh, magnitude hai magnetic field ka wo large hoga agar aap jitna bada isko draw karte jayenge your b will keep on getting smaller and your dl will keep on getting larger and larger remember aap iski over the complete perimeter integrate kar rahe ho to wo aapka bada hota jayega magnetic field aapka jo smaller hota chala jayega so the size of this loop also does not matter really 
you can draw it very small you can draw it very big the only condition is that it has to enclose the current carrying wire you can have it any size and any possible shape so this is basic definition of your ampere circuit law i am again going to apply the stokes theorem which basically says that if you have any vector and you integrate it over the area is basically equal to the value of that vector at the surface at the boundary which is going to be lying for the surface here एंड यहाँ पे क्या होगा फॉर एग्जाम्पल अगर आपने ये बाउंड्री ड्रो की है एम्पीरियल लूप की तो इसका एक सरफेस एरिया होगा उस सरफेस एरिया की जो बाउंड्री है दैट हैज टू बी दिस लाइन ओवर हियर एंड दिस सरफेस एरिया कुड बी ऑफ एनी पॉसिबल शेप आल्सो सो दैट मींस दिस लेफ्ट हैंड साइड हियर लाइन इंटीग्रल ऑफ बी डो डी एल एंड कॉल दिस इक्वेशन वन दिस आई कैन राइट एज V को अगर आप B से रिप्लेस कर दोगे आई कैन राइट इट एज डेल क्रॉस B डोट डी ए इन दिस फॉर्म आई हैव कन्वर्टेड लाइन इंटीग्रल इन टू द एरिया इंटीग्रल हियर नाउ लेट्स लुक एट द राइट हैंड साइड हियर म्यू टाइम्स I. देर इज समथिंग कोल एज द करंट डेंसिटी विच इज करंट पर यूनिट एरिया अगर आपने ये सरफेस एरिया लिया है तो इस सरफेस एरिया में हाउ मच करंट इज फ्लोइंग पर यूनिट एरिया दैट इज बेसिकली कोल्ड एज योर करंट डेंसिटी सो दैट मींस दिस आई हियर आई कैन राइट इन दिस फॉर्म आइडियली यू आर सेइंग दैट आई इज इक्वल टू जे टाइम्स ए ए इज द एरिया बट here we have taken a very simple area but you can have a very complicated size of the area so for example this area then you have to divide this into very small portions and then integrate it that's why the sign integral over here so i is nothing but j times da where da is now the very small area ke over aap integrate kar rahe ho so that you get the proper area of the surface area that you have chosen If you compare both of these equations, ये आपका b dot dl था जो left hand side था ये mu dot i है. So from here I can then say that del cross b dot da is equal to mu dot j dot da. There should be an integral here, right? क्योंकि मैंने b dot dl की value plug in कर दी और mu dot i की plug in कर दी. dot da is common on the both sides so from here we can claim that del cross b is equal to mu dot j and this is your ampere circuit law in differential form this is not maxwell equation so far ये आपके एम्पियर सर्किट लो की डिफरेंशियल फॉर्म है नाउ एज वी डिड विद इन द थर्ड केस जहां पे हमने दोनों तरफ डाइवर्जेंस लिया था इफ वी डू द सेम थिंग हियर इफ आई से दैट टेक डाइवर्जेंस इज ऑन बोथ साइड यू विल हैव डेल डोट del cross b equal to mu not constant you can take it out del dot j from your vector rule your left hand side is equal to 0 but what about the right hand side in the right hand side you have del dot j and we do not know if del dot j is going to be 0 or non zero it can be 0 or maybe it is not zero so that was the problem with ampere circuit law and let me prove that the case is in which your del dot j can be no zero this is basically we are going to deviate from this maxwell's equation for a very small derivation which is basically called as equation of continuity and this is basically based on the principle of local charge con conservation
लोकल चार्ज कंजर्वेशन का मतलब क्या है यूनिवर्सली तो आपका चार्ज कंजर्व रहना ही रहना चाहिए बट लोकली भी योर चार्ज मस्ट बी कंजर्व यू कैन नॉट से दैट कि मैं आज के ऊपर प्लस टू पॉजिटिव चार्ज क्रिएट करके मून पे माइनस टू माइनस टू नेगेटिव चार्ज क्रिएट करके चार्ज तो बैलेंस हो गया है सो वट इज द प्रॉब्लम देयर बट द प्रॉब्लम इज दैट योर चार्ज हैज टू बी कंजर्व लोकली ऑल्सो Which basically means that जहां पे आपने positive charge create किया है at the same place there has to be some negative charges also, which is basically your local charge conservation. And this is a very simple principle which basically states that अगर you have a certain volume, let's say आपके पास में कोई any shape volume है if it it can be a cuboid also, it can be a cylinder also, it can be any 3D volume आप consider कर लो If the current is coming out of this volume, अगर इस वॉल्यूम में से करंट मूव आउट कर रहा है राइट तो वट डज दैट मीन अगर यहाँ पे करंट मूव कर रहा है दैट वुड मीन दैट कि इसके अंदर कहीं ना कहीं चार्ज कलेक्टेड था और वो जो चार्ज है वो आपका डिप्लीट हो रहा है विद रिस्पेक्ट टू टाइम तभी आपका करंट जो है इसमें से बाहर आएगा माइनस साइन इसलिए लगाया है बिकॉज यू आर ड्रॉइंग करंट आउट दैट मीन्स यहाँ पे आपके चार्जेस है वो विद टाइम कम होते चले जाएंगे आई एम रिपीटिंग दैट अगेन यू हैव लेट्स से एनी वॉल्यूम उस वॉल्यूम के अंदर आपके पास में कुछ एक चार्जेस प्रेजेंट है अब उस वॉल्यूम से इफ यू स्टार्ट विद ड्रोइंग द करंट व्हाट वुड हैपन योर चार्ज इन दैट वॉल्यूम विल स्टार्ट टू रिड्यूस बेसिकली एंड दैट इज व्हाई द माइनस साइन हियर If the current is coming out of this volume, that means there were charges present in this volume, and those charges are going to be reducing with time. ऐसा नहीं होगा ना in definite amount of time के लिए उसमें से current नहीं withdraw कर पाओगे. After a certain amount of time, वहाँ पे charges finish हो जाएंगे and आपका जो current है वो basically zero हो जाएगा. Now from here, I जो current है, we said there is something called as current density which is I over A. Again, I can write this as I in this form also. That your I is going to be equal to, and this area now basically is the area that encloses this volume, जहाँ से आपका current flow out कर रहा है. उस current flow out करने वाले volume को जो area bound कर रहा है, you are integrating it over that area. and this area can be of any random shape and that is why you are integrating it over the small step size on the right hand side you have minus d by dt charge here is nothing but the charge density multiplied the volume yahan pe we are doing that because there is a possibility that maybe you have a very large amount of charge just here and there is no charge present here here your charge is zero All the charges present in this one corner of this complete volume. So you can then integrate this charge in the charge density, and the charge density is nothing but ideally this is charge per unit volume. So when I am writing charge, I am integrating charge density over the volume or d tau that we have been using in the past. You can use it d tau also. क्योंकि हमने पास में वॉल्यूम इंटीग्रल के लिए डीटाउ यूज किया है नाउ फ्रॉम हियर लुक एट दिस एक्सप्रेशन हियर आई कैन अगेन यूज द फंडामेंटल थ्योरम ऑफ डाइवर्जेंसिस एंड कन्वर्ट दिस एरिया इंटीग्रल इनटू वॉल्यूम इंटीग्रल which would basically give me del dot j integrated over the volume is equal to let me take this inside and integrate it over volume again d by d ko maine curly by curly t kar diya hai so that now i am giving you more flexibility that your charge it's not only a function of time with respect to time it is reducing but it can also be a function of x y and z also which is the case that we just discussed maybe you have all charge present in one corner of the volume and there is no charge present in the let's say other part of the volume so then your charge density is a function of x y and z coordinate also now from here you are integrating it over d tau 
that means your del dot j is equal to minus curly rho by curly t. This is basically your equation of continuity, which is based on the principle of local charge conservation, which basically states that if current is flowing in a circuit, that means charge is being depleted somewhere. Otherwise, there is no chance that a current might be flowing in the circuit. Now go back to the previous slide here. Our question is that, is del dot J universally zero? The answer is no. Your del dot J is equal to minus curly rho by curly T. Now, if your charge density does not vary as a function of time, अगर आप यहाँ से जितना charge निकाल रहे हैं, उतना ही charge अगर आप यहाँ पे वापस put कर दे रहे हैं, then there is no change in the charge density. And if there is no change in the charge density as a function of time, then your del dot J is equal to zero. And this happens when a constant current flows in the circuit. अगर आपके किसी सर्किट में कॉन्स्टेंट करंट फ्लो कर रहा है तो आप बैटरी में से जिद से जितना चार्ज आप निकाल रहे हो उतना ही चार्ज आप बैटरी में वापस प्लेस कर रहे हो एंड इन दैट केस योर करली रो बाई करली टी इज जीरो एंड योर डेल डॉट जे इज इक्वल टू जीरो एंड वी आर ओके विथ एम्पियर सर्किट और लो बट इन द केसेज वेन दिस करंट दैट इज फ्लोइंग इज In such a way that you are piling up charges somewhere. आप कहीं पे charges को pile up कर रहे हो, which happens in the case of, for example, when you are charging a capacitor. When you are charging a capacitor, you are piling up charges on the plates of the capacitor. And in that case, your del dot J will not be equal to zero. And that is when the problem arises in your Maxwell's equation. your maxwell equation sorry that is when the problem arises in your ampere circuit law your ampere circuit law works when the current is constant but if there is piling up of charges somewhere in the circuit for example on a capacitor then your ampere circuit law fails it basically breaks down you cannot apply ampere circuit law in that case and that is where maxwell came into picture and maxwell fixed this equation in such a way that ye jo aapki ampere circuit law ki equation thi maxwell fixed in it in such a way that it is valid even in the cases when the charge is piling up somewhere and that changed everything so much that it basically did put electricity and magnetism into a single branch of science science which is nowadays called as electromagnetism that that much was the effect of just one more term adding into this equation it combined electricity and magnetism and we'll talk about that in the next class we'll start from here from this equation and we'll start from this equation here also and then we'll see han ji bachche ma'am can you please explain the derivation of equation of continuity again yeah yeah we can do that i'll start from here in the next class then okay ma'am okay anyone else has any other doubt no okay then we'll start from the equation of continuity in the next class